this tutorial, we're going to talk about the bevel tool and we're going to talk about surface normals and we're going to talk about how those two things interact with each other. The bevel tool is such an incredibly useful tool for a lot of polygon modeling operations. So this object right here is a simple triangle object, but it's got rounded corners. And the way that you achieve that can be done in a couple of ways. And it's important to understand both how the tool operates, but also how surface normals function in order to get the best results for achieving this relatively simple object. If I tab to go into edit mode, we have the bevel tool right here. This tool is so useful, especially if you're doing what we call hard body modeling, where you've got a lot of flat surfaces, but then you've got a lot of curving surfaces attaching to those flat surfaces. Let's take a look at a start object right here. In fact, I'm going to call this final. And we're going to turn that off and turn on our start object, which is a simple triangle object, very simple. What we want to do is we want to select this and I'm going to press the tab key. We're first going to come in and look at the bevel operation because there are essentially two modes that you're going to use a lot and one of them is a little bit hidden. So I'm going to select those three corners. So if I just select here, 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 I'm holding the shift key down and then we come over to the bevel tool. The first thing that you want to do is look at this panel up here. So we have one segment and our shape is 0.5. The shape is really the important part I want you to look at. We're first going to click, hold, and drag, and we're gonna look at this basic bevel right here. So this is the default operation, and this can be very useful for some things. I'm going to undo, and we're gonna do it again, but in this particular case, we're gonna increase the segments to two, tab key, and I'm gonna set the shape to one. And then we're going to do this again, and look what happens. This is actually one of the most useful modes within the bevel tool in terms of producing geometry that will help us control that curvature of curved areas blending into flat areas, okay? If you walk away from this tutorial not knowing anything else, knowing how to put the tool into this mode, you will have done well, <laughs> okay? So let's do something now. I'm gonna undo and we're gonna come back to this basic shape right here and we're gonna start talking about normals now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take a look at this triangle object and we're gonna put it into its default mode where if I leave edit mode and I simply invoke shade smooth on an object, it's gonna have this sort of weird appearance right here where we don't really see the corners except at the profile ends. Now, if we try and understand what's happening right here, we've told it to shade smooth. All it's doing is it's using a mechanism that all 3D applications use where it blends the surface of one surface into the next. That's a really basic way of describing what surface normals do. Surface normal is a line that is perpendicular to a surface or an element. If I come down to the little polygon icon right here and we look at normals, we can turn on what's called auto smooth and then suddenly that shading disappears. What's happening is we're telling it not to shade across these very large angles right here. Let's actually jump into edit mode and we'll look at this from a very sort of discrete standpoint so we can understand what's going on. I'm going to click this and then we're gonna come down to just display normals. And when we look at this edge on, in fact, let me, I need to change display modes here. If we look at this so it's just edge on with no perspective, we can see the lines coming out here from each surface. And those lines are exactly perpendicular to that surface and those are called surface normals. An application uses these to blend between these surfaces, but it does it actually at the vertex level. So let's come over here and let's turn on the display of vertex normals. So we can see right here that these vertices at these corners actually has a line that's coming out in a perpendicular type fashion to those corners. And it is that that produces the shading that we see. So we don't see shading right here though, because we have told through the auto smooth function not to generate smoothing if the angle between this normal and this normal is greater than 30 degrees. But we can alter that. So let's come over here and let's take a look at this. Let's set this value to 200 and then we can see that in fact it does shade. 
but we can actually tell Blender to put this into a mode where we can see this at the normal level too. So I'm going to turn off vertex normals and we're going to turn on this thing called split normals right here. So if we come in here and look at this in the front view, let me switch this into a polygon view and then we'll come to front. The split normals displays the same way it was before with the vertex normals, but as soon as we come over here now and set this back down to the 30 degrees, we can see that it splits the normals, and this then prevents shading across that surface. And so those normals give us a visual representation of what the shading is actually doing. Now, this is actually really important for how the bevel tool operates because there's a function in there that is designed to control the normals. So let's jump back in here and take a look at what happens when we invoke the bevel function, now taking into account this concept of normals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and select these three corners again, and we're going to come over to the bevel tool. There are two ways that you can model something. You can model directly the polygons that you're going to end up rendering, or you're going to be modeling so that you're going to be using subdivision surfaces, meaning you're modeling a polygon mesh that is what we call a cage that is going to drive a subdivision surface. And depending on the approach, you're going to use the polygon bevel tool in just a little bit of a different way. We'll just do a bevel here and then we'll control it using the control panel we have right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a value of 6, and then we're going to set that shape back down to 0.5 and that will give us rounding. So let's come over here and take a look at this relative to what's happening with the normals. So I'm going to come back into the front view here, and we can see the surface normal, which is right at the center of the face, and then we have vertex normals. Vertex normals are an average of the surface normal that is on adjoining faces. So it's just basically right in between them. Now, the issue that we have right here is that this normal right here sits between this long polygon and this shorter polygon, and it's going to blend the surface across those to give us apparent curvature on an otherwise flat surface. So let's take a look at this if I just rotate the view right here. It's not immediately apparent until you study it kind of closely that there's a slight subtle amount of curvature shading that's happening across these surfaces. Now, if we come over and invoke this function called a harden normals, watch what happens. You can turn it on and you can turn it off and see a subtle shift in these flat faces. What that's designed to do is to make sure that these large flat faces remain flat, not just geometrically, but more specifically from a shading standpoint. If we come back over into the front view and we take a look at this, we can see what's happening with the actual normals. So I want your eye to watch this normal right here as I turn that hardened normal off and on, you can see that it's affecting this normal. What it's doing is it's simply transferring this vector and applying it to this normal right here, and then it blends around this surface, so that as the curvature comes down here, this fooling of the eye, if you will, of making flat surfaces appear to be shaded and curving stops right here because this normal is now the same as the whole flat surface is normal. Okay, so that's actually really critical if you're going to be producing a model where you're modeling exactly the polygons that you want to render. And you want to make sure that those flat surfaces are flat, you just enable the hardened normals function. Now, if you're going to be modeling this for a subdivision surface object, the approach is actually going to be a little bit different and this hard normal function really won't come into play. And this is where the other mode of the bevel tool is going to come into operation, and we're going to take a look at that next. Let's take a look at this now from the standpoint of producing an object that's going to be a subdivision surface object as opposed to direct polygon modeling to produce the rounding that you want. So I'm going to come back in here and press the tab key, and I've turned off all the normal display for right now. We'll come back in and turn that on in a second. Let's say that we want to come in here and produce, the, using the bevel tool, rounded corners again. Let's just bevel them and then we'll change them down here. We'll come over and do six segments using that 0.5 so that produces the rounding. And then if we come over here and we look at this from the front view, We've got the rounding, but as soon as we apply a subdivision surface, in fact, let me turn on 
we'll, we'll turn on the hard normal function so that we can see how this doesn't affect, turn on this right there, so that we can see how that has no effect on the actual subdivision. We're going to come over here now and apply a subdivision to it. In fact, let's turn this up a little bit more. I'm going to take it to three and three. And we can see that there's curvature coming way down into these flat areas. And that's not what we want. Okay, we really want no more curvature by about this point right here. So the hard normal function doesn't have any effect on geometry. So what we need to do is we need to back up and we need to apply a boundary polygon here and here to prevent subdivision from going into the flat area. So let me undo this. Let's undo. We're going to come back here and I'm going to turn off subdivision temporarily. We'll turn off normals for right now, just because it's a lot to take in with all that visual happening. I've still got those corners selected, but in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to change the configuration so that we're two and then one. And then we produce a boundary set of polygons first. Okay. Click. We'll reselect the corners and then we'll bevel again right up and until you get pretty close to where those polygons are here and then we'll reconfigure so we have six and the shape is back 0.5 which is the rounding so what we've done is we've put in this boundary polygon here and this one here which is exactly planar to this large region now when we turn subdivision back on let's look at this in the front view we don't have that curvature coming down into our flat areas. That boundary polygon produced by the bevel tool in its alternate mode gave us this. It made sure that we were flat where we wanted to be flat. Okay, so we could come over here and turn on again our normals and we can see that this normal here matches the flat planar area normal and then it starts to curve. So this is a very important concept to understand if you're going to be producing models that have a lot of flat surfaces with curving surfaces attached to them. And here we can see that in this particular case, the hard normal function really won't have a lot of bearing on this. So if I'm going to be producing a model for subdivision surfaces, I really don't think about this. It's only when you're modeling direct polygons that are intended to be rendered exactly as they are. So we can take a look at this and there's one final thing that I want to show you dealing with edge creases. We come in here and we look at this from a shading standpoint, it looks pretty good. In fact, let me turn all this off. I'm going to press the tab key so that we can look at it. That's very well controlled and it looks just great. It's exactly the kind of effect that we want. But we can even go one step further to even make it even better. Let me turn off the normals right here so we don't have to think about that because we're going to look at geometry again. If I come over here and we turn off optimal display and then we come back over into a mode that we can look at the polygons, we can see right here, in fact, let me toggle this display, let me toggle this optimal display right here and we can see that there is this edge right here and it actually corresponds to this cage polygon edge right there. And what that means is that the subdivided polygons from this parent are blending into this large polygon right here. And it's blending to that point. We can see that here when we turn off the optimal display. We can see this transition of the polygons. But we can control the subdivision even better because in, in a theoretical way, it's actually technically pulling a, just a slight amount of curvature into these regions. On this model, you're not seeing it. But on some models where you've got very thin bounding polygons blending into much longer, larger, irregular polygons, it can pull a little bit of surface curvature into those. And we can prevent that from happening by selecting these boundary edges right here. In fact, let me come back to optimal display. It's really hard to see. And I'm going to select those two boundary polygons and we're going to come up to the edge mode and then down to a function called edge crease is when we start mousing, 
you'll be able to see the subdivision adapting until those edges merge. And that means these child polygons are not going to pass the boundary. So if we come over and turn off optimal display, we can see exactly that. And it will produce the very, very best result possible for this particular configuration.